Alright. Make it so I can actually read it a little better. Good evening. Is it evening? Good afternoon? I don't know what it is. <laughs> Late in the day. Uh, we got four people right now. We'll give them a minute here. Yeah. If you guys can hear us okay, let me know. It's going to be hard to see. All right. Cosmos, Anthony, Vince, Steven. Man, hey guys, Bluegrass Roadside. <laughs> howdy, howdy, howdy. So this is, this is Tom, 84 people right now, that's quick. Uh, this is Tom Feller, if you guys love our song, this is the guy that did it, right here. Thank you. <laughs> Most of it, 99% of it. 99%, 98%. He's a little dirty today too, because he's been working on his bus. Yeah, helping. Yeah. Look at my butt. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we've been, yeah, we've been working on his bus the last uh, few days. Uh, today was my third day. Yeah, day number three for me. But the first day I only worked like two hours. Um, and then uh, yesterday, if you're on Patreon, you would have saw the video or at least you saw a clip of it today that I posted on the community tab uh, of how hard one of his, his bearings was seized onto his hub, the amount of work that we had to go through to get it off. And then today we finished pulling the rest of his hub. So. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about his bus, uh, but if you want to talk for a little bit, I'll let you kind of talk. Well, uh, <laughs> this is this was a great learning experience for me, and, and I've been dabbling with buses since I was about probably four or five years old. Uh, my grand, my actually my uncles had an old 4104. They played music all around the country, and they bought one in the late 70s, uh, probably about a year, and I was really young when this happened, but I remember the motor going out of it. My grandpa actually rebuilt it out in the barn, and I can remember standing there watching him playing in the head and just doing all that kind of stuff they did back then. They ran that for seven or eight years and bought an Eagle, and then they ran it for another 10, 15 years before they uh, disbanded. So that kind of got me started in all the bus stuff, and, and I got to meet a lot of other groups while I was traveling around that also had buses. So it, it's always kind of been a part of what I like, and, and I've had several of them myself. I had a 4905, that was my first bus. I put an automatic transmission in it, had to retrofit all the coolers and everything, oh, and, yeah. and all the shifter cable and linkage and run an air shifter. That was a fun project, but I got all that done, and the inside was just shot. The, the floor was all needed redone, and I was working a lot of hours, and I just said, I just sold it for what I could get out of it, went down the road, and. Uh, so I've always been around them, Eagles, I love those, uh, but the MCIs I've just gotten into here in the last seven or eight years, and I've had two of those so far, and right now, the one that Scott's working on is a custom coach, it's a 88102A3, uh, if you go to my Facebook page, I think, uh, I've got some pictures up there of it, but it came out of Texas, and, uh, we bought this thing sight unseen, which is, uh, uh, going to bus buying school here. <laughs> if you see one that it can be the best looking bus in the world and it can have hidden problems and I think you know Scott's already even before long before he did my bus has pointed that out but I'll testify to that that uh, you know if, if it's got a price on it that's kind of steep uh, you may want to do your homework a little bit and look at you know don't look at the cosmetics look at the things underneath you know the wheel bearings and a lot, watching a lot of Scott's videos really opened my eyes to that. And I knew when I got this thing and got it home, I had a lot, a lot of work to do. I got, got a lot of it done last year, but I ran out of time. Our, our Eagle laid down on us and we had to run the MCI. So I got the brakes adjusted up the best I could get them with the time that I had. I knew they still weren't right, but I'm, I've been driving a truck for almost 30 years, my CDL license. So... I do know enough to, you know, going down the highway, laying back, and just doing the best you can, not to speed if you know you have a, a brake a break issue. <laughs> well, <clears throat> allow yourself plenty of time to stop and all that good stuff. But the point is, um, I decided instead of keep uh, continuing to run it like that, uh, I got in touch with Scott back in probably January, somewhere in there. 
And we actually had some stuff lined up. We were gonna do some work back in May. That fell through because of the shutdown. Uh, I got an opening with his son, Tyler, who's also a great mechanic. And he was working pretty close to where I was. So it worked out where I was able to get the bus to Tyler. Tyler did get a lot of the air leaks and oil leaks fixed. Uh, but he's also very busy right now uh, with his own job, just like I am. So we uh, we recruited old Scott here to come up and uh, see, uh, give it a stab. Yeah, my other Indiana job canceled, and it just worked out that I was able to yeah. come up here and, and get into the rest of it. So now See, if I hadn't watched your channel all the time, I wouldn't have known that. And, and yeah. everything works out for a reason, I guess. It, that was amazing, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, you've heard me say it a million times that when you step on the brake pedal, you should want to fling your passengers out the windshield. And if you're driving a bus that doesn't do that, then some, something is wrong and, and you should get it looked at. So I'm glad that he brought it in for us to go through it. Um, we found some pretty serious brake issues on it and he's probably going to have about 40% more braking when we're done. So today we found a tag axle brake that wasn't working at all. Uh, yesterday, I mean, one of the rear uh, main drive brakes, uh, axle drive axle brakes, um, completely grease covered, and the S cam is bad in it too. So only half of the brake shoes were actually touching the surface, and that that half was still covered in grease and oil. So uh, it's going to stop much much better once we get through it here. Um, that wheel bang yesterday was just crazy. So I can't wait to release that video. It's, it's going to be fun. He, he's seen the video. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and, and something that, and I, I do, I do a certain amount of mechanic work. I don't get into is, is involved as Scott does. Um, uh, but something that really opened my eyes too here just today was the fact that I kind of had it in my mind that the brake shoes were the problem, that they were just old and thin and worn out. And that's not necessarily the case. There was other things causing a lot of my, most of my problem. Yep. So even having what you say, 50, 60% brake shoes all the way around left. Yeah, it, oh, at least, uh, yeah. They're, they're still... Your, your fronts are probably 90, the tags are 90, and then the main drive brakes are probably, you know, 60%. So. so my thought was that the problem lied in just the brake shoes, and it turns out that there was a lot of other problems that were contributing. So it's, it's not always just the brakes, so you got to dig a little deeper sometimes. Yeah, and, and I had to find the problem with your hubs, like we didn't notice leaky, you know, if I would have just got in there with a flashlight and shine the flashlight looking for a leaky hub seal where you look for oil coming out, getting on the brakes, only one of his hubs showed that symptom. The other ones though, all had water inside of them. They weren't leaking grease externally. The grease wasn't coming out of them, but water was going into them and there was rust inside. Uh, and some of that had been hidden because people, whoever had serviced it had just completely <laughs> packed them full of grief, 100% full of like when they slid it on the... <laughs> they slid through the grease. They, they had to have gone through the grease and it actually would have pushed some out. I've never seen so much grease in a hub ever. And that's all of his were like that. It's crazy. A, a gallon of grease in each hub. It was like, it was like ridiculous. Right, it's just crazy. But uh, luckily uh, the hubs or actually the drums are still in fairly good shape. They're all can, in good we can, shape. We can probably roll with those. The brake shoes, I think, are going to be okay to to roll on with for probably at least another year or two. Because I'm not driving it much right now. The music industry is pretty well shut down. And some of the jobs I had booked for this year have canceled already. I actually only have one left because uh, everything's been pushed back to August and September. And I do have one as of right now in September if it doesn't cancel on me. So uh, that's why when I, when I brought the bus to Tyler, uh, I really wasn't in that big of a hurry. Uh, but since then, you know, he's gotten, like I said, his work's gotten really busy and I've gotten busier. So now we're, we just kind of had to go with this opportunity here. Yep. So talk to us about the song. How did you get the idea to do the song? Well, <laughs> The song was, and, and I've, I've seen uh, comments, and, and I don't mean for this to sound like any kind of critique on the videos, but going back, and especially some of your earlier videos, there would just be like these 20 second, uh, second clips, you know, here, here's a cold start of the 8B71, you know, and then no, no real explanation or <laughs> starter or finish, it was just, there it is and it's gone. So 
And I, I watched all that, and, and I like the style. I mean, everybody has a different style, and I like the style that you do. But I also saw something that could work, I think, for, for what you're doing. And I guess where I got my idea was you do, and I, I haven't seen, of course, you haven't been on the road in a long time, but you did a lot of windshield time on your <laughs> videos, you know, just like traveling down the road, uh, looking out the windshield, kind of giving the viewers the the view that you're seeing yep. is the idea. That's where I probably first had the idea. I thought, man, I, I like these videos, but what if what if you could just play a song or something while you were and, and kind of sync that to what you were seeing? That was how the original idea started. And then I was doing, you know, I drive a truck every day through the week and so there was one day, probably around Christmas, early December or Christmas, I just, the idea just kind of hit me. I just watched your video of uh, over in Bell Pre, Ohio. I think that was, was that Sage's? Sage's pre-war bus, yeah. Uh, pre-war bus. And then there was another one over there that way, a 4104 that had yep. been sitting for that like 30 Mark's, years. Mark's bus, yeah. So those two probably, uh, and even some of the words, I felt like the song just kind of wrote itself. <laughs> You know, I just, all I did was kind of put it together and make it rhyme a little bit here and there. And I had to think of uh, stuff that would, that would work, you know. And like the pre-war thing, I got a lot of crap over the, <laughs> uh, well, that's not a pre-war. Well, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I'm glad somebody pointed that out because it all worked out. Because now the new version of the song has Lenny yep. incorporated, which I probably should have done that to begin with, but. You can't get everything right the first time, you know. Well, and the fact that we had not even talked, like you never even, like you just did yeah, it, the song and, and was done and he sent it to me and I was like, holy cow. The, the, and, and here's something else and I'm just going to be honest here is I really wanted to get Scott to work on my bus and I, <laughs> and I didn't know, I've heard him talking in his videos about he, he generally can't answer his phone during the day. He's just getting so many calls and he's trying to work and I get that, you know. So I was trying to figure out how I'm going to get on a waiting list or something nice. here. And so I did this kind of sight unseen, kind of on blind faith, and, and I just threw it out there. And the things have just kind of worked ever since. I mean, and it worked out good for him, I think. He's got a lot of positive feedback. And 40-foot uh, coach, it is a 40-foot coach. Oh, is that? Yeah. Yeah. It is a, yeah, it's a 40-foot Looks like a 40, it actually looks longer with all the tires off of yeah. it. Yeah. It looks like it's like 60 foot long. We have every tire, every single tire is off the bus <laughs> right now. But the song, and, and I actually have a recording studio in my house. That was the other part of my answer. Um, and so I have a group, I, I'll go ahead and give the name out, I guess. It's yeah. Feller and Hill and the Bluegrass Buckaroos. We started that group in 2009. And we, we haven't officially disbanded, we're just not working right now. Both of us are working day jobs. The music industry shut down anyway. So uh, we've recorded four projects of our own and uh, our music gets played on Sirius XM, uh, Channel 62, Bluegrass Junction. So that's kind of how I got into all this here the last few years. But I already had the recording studio. I know how to play just about every instrument. So it all came together pretty nicely. I just sat down one, I think it was a Sunday afternoon, maybe early January, and I just threw everything together. I had some lyrics. I actually had the, I had the lyrics in my head, but I had to write them down to, <laughs> when I went in to sing it cause, so I could remember them. <laughs> and uh, if, if you tried to get me to sing it right now, I'd probably forget half of them because <laughs> I've, I haven't really played it. And it's, it's just been, you know, playing on your videos and stuff. But, um, and real quick while I'm at it, the song, if I know Scott may have told you already, but the song is available on iTunes and Google Play only. And right now it's just available as a download. There's no CD anywhere that you can buy, but iTunes and Google Play, you can purchase the song. And the arrangement I made with Scott, and I can I tell can I yep. tell you this? Uh -huh. I am going to give Scott all the proceeds from the sale of the song. So if we sell a thousand copies, then the money that I generate from that is going to go directly to him, to his Patreon or PayPal account. And I have a way to track that. I have a separate account set up for the song uh, from my other song. So I'll be able to track that easily. 
And if, and I've also got the other part of this is it's also being pushed to radio right now. So Sirius XM actually has a copy of it. I'm not sure if they've played it yet. I haven't had time to check, but they've had a copy. They downloaded their copy about two weeks ago. That's awesome. So if it gets on their playlist, then I can make money as a songwriter and from the airplay royalties. That's how that works. Oh, cool. So, but the actual sale of the song from iTunes and Google Play will go to you. That is incredible. And your YouTube channel. And the other question I've had is, well, how, what's in it for me? You know, how do I make money on this? Well, the way I make money is Scott is already saving me so much money by working on my bus and knowing that it's getting done right instead of spending thousands of dollars at a shop that's going to fill everything full of grease and say, hey, it's, it's okay now. Take it <laughs> down the road, you know. That's how I'm saving money. And, and I'll be, I said this to Scott uh, this morning when I got there. I, I said, uh, probably if I hadn't caught, if he hadn't caught this, probably I would end up having a bus fire would have been my guess. If I, I started to take it to Florida last year, and that would have been a really bad idea, I think. Yeah. Knowing that the bearing is seized now the way that we do. Yeah, it, it would, so, I, I would have not like, I'm glad that you brought it in. Yeah, so that's, sure. that's to answer everyone's question, that's what's in it for me, is I, I can go crawl on my bunk on the bus and <laughs> sleep at night now, not having to worry that it's gonna catch on fire while someone's driving me down the road at night. You know? <laughs> Show him your finger. He had an incident oh, today. Oh, mercy. I don't even know if the camera will do it justice. <laughs> this is actually my my third finger, and I don't know. I'm going to hold it sideways. Oh, yeah, we can see it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really swollen right now. That's the bottom of it, the back side. So <laughs> you can do this kind of work day in and day out, and it just might not be your day. So I grabbed the tire. I think the problem was the bus was sitting too low Just and the fender, the, fender, the fender skirts were not letting the tire come out. It was caught in the middle it of one of the caught. tracks. So I cocked it sideways. I kind of cocked the top of it out and grabbed the inside and pulled. And when I did, it fell back. It wasn't, it wasn't cocked yet and it wasn't ready to come out. And it fell back and it pinched my finger between the rim and the hub. Yeah. And it, I heard a crunch. Mm. I really did hear a crunch. So when it comes to a finger, there's not a whole lot they can do for it. You know, I mean, it's, I'm going to get some ice on it when I get home and it, I can, I can really not bend it cause it's swollen right now, but <clears throat> stuff happens, you know, Man, I felt bad when he did that. I still feel bad. <laughs> well, the, the worst part that I felt bad because it happened like within probably 20 minutes, when I got there, and I really wasn't worth a damn the rest of the <laughs> I had good intentions, but I, I did what I could, but it was between that and the heat, we were working in the direct sunlight today, weren't we? It was, yeah, it was, so, it was warm out there. And then it started to rain on the way home, on the way back here. So. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was fun. <laughs> well, we love the song. I, I think it's incredible. I can't thank you enough for doing that. Well, and, and I, I guess I started to, say it a while ago and I got sidetracked. I had no idea when I sent the song to you if you would even respond to me or like the song or uh, maybe you like a different kind of music. I didn't even know. That's just the kind of music I did. I actually can play a lot of different styles of music, but that's the one I chose for the song. And I heard somebody comment since we've been uh, working on all this that's, that it kind of reminded him of uh, Jerry Reed uh, East Mountain Down uh -huh. oh yeah and I, I never thought of that when I recorded it but now that I listen to it I can see that yeah I can see it and that I actually have a, a playlist of that kind of like 70s trucker music kind yeah. of stuff that I listen to when we drive Kelly does not like it at all but, <laughs> <laughs> but that song's on there all the time well so. no, I haven't got to meet Kelly yet but has the song grown on her I mean does oh she, she likes it yeah she she's always liked it yeah from day one okay she instantly yeah. liked it I took grief from a few people who were real idiots about it and then I just blocked them from the channel and said screw you if you're gonna well have I mean <laughs> you're never gonna you're never gonna please everybody I mean no matter whether it's music or the way that you uh, what kind of tools you use on the bus or what kind of tools you're not using you oh know? I, I yeah I've learned long ago so you you're better off and that kind of brings up a point um, 
if my mind doesn't go blank here real quick. This is my disclaimer. We just talked about this a while ago. So I've already seen uh, Scott had some little teasers up there on his channel about uh, the brakes, uh, you know, being really, really bad and, and stuff like that. So I went over this bus. We bought this bus again. We bought it sight unseen. I actually had to fly my business partner, Chris, down to Texas to pick it up. And I wished I wouldn't have done that. If I would have went, I would have spent a little more time crawling around and poking and prodding. And but you were also buying it from a person who was really big in a bus company, right? Is that who you bought it from? No, or, we bought, or it, bought it from somebody else. Yeah, the, the guy that bought it from him, um, he just parked it in 2007. He put, he put it in storage for 10 years and it sit there out in the outside storage. So that caused a lot of issues, I think, with anything rubber and stuff like that, electrical issues. But as far as, you know, the brakes and stuff, I, I did the best I could with what I had to work with to get it home. And I really haven't driven it that much since. So like the flat tire the other day, uh, I knew the tire was flat because I had new tires put on last year. And within like a week, one of them was already going down. So it was either a valve stem or a rim. I just haven't had any time to take it anywhere, but it's been parked in the barn yeah. up until I brought it to Tyler. So before I did that, I always put the gauges on all the tires before I even move the bus. I mean, that's the first thing I learned from driving yeah. the truck all these years. So I have the TPMS in mind, so, so I just look at a little gauge right. in my dash and it tells me. Right. Cause the only thing that with that, you don't have the, do you have the Alcos on your bus? No. Okay. So on the Alcos, they're like really hard to get to, and those tire pressure. It's yeah, like you, you got to get a like straight a special, one. You to, you can't like use a rubber the hose or something. You got to yeah. have to to screw it on there and take it on and off. Yeah. Well, even the tire pressure gauge in the Alcoa is with those small round holes. Yeah. A lot of the tire pressure gauges is like a straight yeah. thing with like a forty five degree angle yeah. on the end, and you can't get that forty five degree angle tool in yeah. on his style of rims. So I do have a straight one on there, but yeah. like I said, the tire pressure monitor would I would love that. I just got to figure out if I can get one that'll work with those those type of rims. They, yeah, they do. They have ones that fit on there. And you may have to take the outside tire off to get it on the first time, but yeah. you can still fill through them and everything too. Right. So. so that's that's about the short version of my my story. <laughs> I don't know if we had any questions. You, I think we you did. see how crazy I, this goes. I saw I, one and I tried to answer I'll try it. to scroll back as far as I can uh, here. Okay. What do we got? 370 people? Like yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna try to scroll through here. I don't have Kelly's out. Kelly went to the lake today. Tyler's at his house. Tom's River, New Jersey. He's, he's he likes your song. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you love my music. Thank you. <laughs> what size MCI? Forty foot. And it's a one hundred two A three A three. Uh, so the buses that you've owned, so you, you talked about your first one was a Buffalo mm -hmm. and then what did you have after that? Uh, well, my uncles had a 1970 Silver Eagle, the one that was still made in Belgium. Yep. And so I started to buy that one actually before I bought the Buffalo and it had so much rust damage underneath the, the motor was literally ready to fall out on the ground and it would have taken several thousand dollars worth of welding just to get it where I could safely run it and it just wasn't worth it. It, it had set, there was too much salt damage over the years. So I let that one go. Um, my cousin has an 86 Eagle. It's a Model 10, actually Model 15. And that's the one we've been running for several years. We basically just leasing it from him and I'm doing, I was doing the upkeep on it the best I could, but um, that one overheated. He is not, he wasn't willing to fix the radiator that I kept pointing out that was <laughs> rotted out and causing it to overheat or that temperature gauge that was broke. Nice. So you know how that went. Yep. So that one's been sitting for almost a year now over at a shop in uh, Southeastern Indiana. And so, an MC-8, we bought an MC-8 shell off of a good friend of mine in Tennessee. And 
we run into the problem of not having enough time to build the inside of it. So this other bus came along already, you know, 70% finished on the inside. So we bought it instead. And I had the same guy that I bought it from come up and build bunks and a shower in it for me. And I traded the MC8 back to him. Oh. So now he's got it. It's just right back where it started. But that's a great bus, that eight. It's got the original AC that still works, the factory air. It'll run you out. And that's all the buses I own or that I've owned. Forty-nine oh five, a buffalo, a camel. <laughs> <laughs> they got a little hump on the front. Yeah. Well, the camels have two humps, though, don't they? Some of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really see anything major questions on there. Um, so mostly just gonna be waiting on parts for a couple of days. I got some parts, some things to clean, but they're not gonna be real hard to clean the the hubs on there and stuff. We got wheel bearings and races to replace and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the videos are up on Patreon now. If you happen to join Patreon, you can see them early. Otherwise, you'll still get to see everything just on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's going to come come later this week with everything. So, I don't know how you find the time to even do the videos with the, the way some of the bus work goes. Everything <laughs> everything you run into is is more involved than uh, than you anticipated. So, yeah, I yesterday I should have got everything that I got done today. It should have been done yesterday, but when it takes, you know, four hours to get a single bearing off of a yeah. hub. It was just, it was, it was crazy. You tell about the hub. Oh, um, is that Tyler? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't really told the whole story, Tyler, because it's in the video that they'll get to see, but uh, <laughs> I showed a picture of it on my community tab with the backhoe trying to pull pull the hub off with the backhoe, oh, yeah. <laughs> which was unsuccessful, by the way. You see that and you think that would work. <laughs> And the one on the other side came off in my fingers today. As soon as I took the nut off, it just fell right off, um, which is how it should have been. It, it was crazy. When I, when I talked to Luke at U.S. Coach, I'm like, do you have any tricks on how to get a seized bearing off a hub? I'm like, we just tried pulling it off with a backhoe. And he's like, well, if you tried that and that didn't work, I don't have anything that can help you. <laughs> he thought it was funny. <laughs> I just saw somebody ask what motor was in my bus. It's a 8B92. It is the electronic version, the TA. Um, the motor is actually a really good running motor. Starts I, easy, I, sounds great. Yeah. I have ran, uh, I think we ran about five or 6,000 miles on it last year. Motor wise, it was not any issues. There's a few electrical, some grounding issues that we, that, you know, and Tyler was able to help us get uh, the rest of those figured out. We had a few of them figured out, but uh, he pointed out some stuff that that was still causing issues. And, and one of them was the, your battery cables that you yes. had that's connecting the two. And I think that was a big a Oh, big absolutely problem. it was, because they're 24 volt batteries, so it's two 12 volt batteries hooked together. And the battery, the cables going between the two batteries um, running uh, in series there were very, very undersized. I, I don't remember what gauge you said they were. But yeah, they were, it, was, it was way small. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think what was happening, it was just like uh, creating low voltage and it was almost arcing when you would go to start it. Yeah. Because some of those posts were like the batteries I took off there. One of those posts was kind of melted. Yeah. I was just going to say, I've seen them melted on MCIs yeah. before with that. So yeah, that's, that's a big thing with the 24 volt stuff. You got to watch out for that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not really sure what else he's done to it. I hadn't really talked to him. Gone. I didn't even know he'd worked on air leaks and stuff like that. So yeah, he actually had, uh, and I don't know that he put a couple of the videos up. Um, so he fixed uh, the big belt of death, the fan yep. assembly. There's there's a there was a uh, regulator, and then the actual valve. Oh, I remember that now. Valve. Yep, yeah, that was leaking. He replaced all those. Uh, Luke at U.S. Coach was able to get us those parts, and uh, also the one on the AC compressor was also leaking. Not the regulator, just the valve. He replaced that. There was a wiper, the air wiper valves up front. He replaced one of those. There was a lot of air leaking there, um, so it's getting where it builds air right now. But we still got to do the PP2, the parking brake valve. Yeah, that that's what's causing when you have the parking brake set. That's causing the air to leak back through the treadle valve. Um, and we can jiggle that valve and get it to stop. So that's how we knew that's what it was for sure. But we had already ordered because I knew that mm -hmm. that's the thing that makes it when it leaks back through the treadle with the parking yeah. brake on, that's what it is. 
because I found that I took the, the spare tire compartment, I, I crawled up under there and stuck my head and I could feel the, the treadle valve was blowing air. Yeah. And uh, that's, I knew it was leaking, I just didn't know what was causing it to leak. Yeah, and, and if you didn't know that the PP2 can cause that, a lot of people will go ahead and replace their treadle yeah. valve, which is gonna set you back about 300 bucks by the time you're done with labor on it and everything. Well, I honestly thought that it was gonna be the, the brake chamber, the DD3 chamber. Okay, yeah. Uh, a friend of mine down in Nashville that uh, does some bus work had mentioned that to me. And then I heard you talking about those being about six or $700 to replace. Yep. So I'm glad that he knew enough to throw out the PP2 valve instead. Yeah, yeah, because I don't spent remember how much that was, but it wasn't very much, right? It's like 30 bucks. Yeah, because I probably would have just went ahead and ordered it and then still had an air leak. Yeah, <laughs> nothing more frustrating than that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and Tyler did uh, several oil leaks that he fixed, and, and we're actually going to do the power steering lines, too. They're, those are all shot. And so those still all got to come off and get new ones made. And we're going to change over to transmission fluid and the power steering. Is that what? Yeah. Because I feel like I get a lot of noise out of the if, power if you, steering. Yeah. If there's awesome. motor oil in there, which is, it, yeah. it, people do put that in there. But when you, when you switch it to like power steering fluid, it's going to be a lot quieter. Like Juan's bus, when we were there, they had motor oil in that thing. We, and he was, it was so loud. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we changed it, he's like, you don't even hear it. Like, you couldn't even hear the engine running. It was so loud. That's how. Yeah, well, that's all. And especially when it's a little cold out or something, that, that's just all you hear. Yeah. Like, every time you turn the wheel, yep. you can hear it. Yep. So that should fix that, too. Yeah. I don't know if we have any other. So where is, yeah, what motor was in there? We already answered that, right? Yeah. Um, my opinion of the current style of Greyhounds. Um, they're big, boxy. They don't have any styling to them. Like, uh, I mean, that, that's why I like my bus, just because all, yeah. all the little Art Deco features and stuff like that. But I understand that nobody can, like companies need to worry about their bottom line today and they don't need their bus to look pretty like that. So yeah. they're more, maybe more aerodynamic or I, I think all major bus lines right now for the most part, all their buses look the same. Like I can't necessarily can't distinguish like yeah. I used to. Now I followed you back from the shop. I was usually right behind you, but uh, there was a lot of people outside and everybody I saw was turning heads <laughs> when your bus went by. So I, I did notice that. So if that tells you anything, I think the... How did the, it sound behind me? Oh, it sounded great. I loved it. <laughs> Especially when you took off out of the out of the shop, <laughs> that first couple of feet there. Uh, where was I? What is that? Oh, blue silver side. That old blue silver side. That's what I'm saying there. I think he's oh, okay. having trouble understanding. In that old blue silver. Side. It's gonna stay blue. <laughs> Oh, the custom, how long have I had the custom coach? Um, we bought it in 2017 and it sat in the barn for the first year. Uh, and then I got it out last year and, and got it a lot, a lot of work done. A so guy, Bo, Bo has a custom coach as yeah, well. Yeah, I bought it out of Texas. Uh, I won't give the guy's name, but he was, uh, he worked in the oil fields down there. That's what he used it for. He would park it and he would stay on it while he was working down there for a week or two at a time. And the rest of the time it would go into storage. Now I have a theory that basically no maintenance was done in the 10 years that he owned it. So until somebody can prove me wrong on that. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm gonna say that grease in those hubs was more than 10 years old, the way oh, it was yeah. cracked and. So uh, before that actually, and I won't give his name either, but he was an executive at uh, Custom Coach. And uh, I have since spoken with him. He knows I have the bus and it's, it's got a history from uh, when it was built. I actually have the history from when it was built. Do you know who it was built for originally? Um, Indian Trails was the very first owner. Uh, they were probably a charter service. Uh, so it's a, it, it's an, a, is it the layout that Custom Coach did? Was it an executive coach or was it a, 
it's always been an executive coach, but it's the, the interior that it has now is not the original interior. They've, they've redid the interior about three different times is what the gentleman told me that, that owned it, um, that knows the history of it. Okay. And the, the only thing I did different is it had, uh, you know how it's got the lounge up front now? Yep. Uh, it actually had two of those lounges. It had one in the front, another one just like it in the, in, in the, in the middle section. So we took that section out and we put a bunk room in with four bunks. We didn't do, you know, there's usually just, uh, you know, five or six of us to travel, all with somebody driving just about. So we did four bunks and then we did a shower, a full shower in there. Um, it still has a restroom in the back, the custom coach put in there. It's got a kitchen in the back and maybe we can get some, uh, pictures or video put up of it before we get it all finished. Yeah, no. It's just a little dark. I don't want to run the generator while we're trying to work down there, so. Yeah. Didn't want to crank it up today. It's so hard to read these things. So where is the Prevo bus from? I'm not sure. What the Prevo is. Yeah, I don't know what they're talking about either. <clears throat> A little out of focus. That's probably me. I'm moving around. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably better than I am out of focus. Yeah, we look cleaner out of focus. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think we're pretty well through most of these. Uh, I don't think I'm going to the flexible rally. I don't even, is that really going to happen? I, yeah, I, they're, they're canceling these events. They're, they, they keep pushing them back and pushing them back and, I think everything's going to end up canceling anything major. And, and I just realized doing this video, we're not even six feet apart. Are we? We're close. We're, we're, we're close. But <laughs> we were already, we're, I mean, if, if, if we've got each other's germs, I mean, we were working under the bus today. and Passing tools back and forth. Exactly. And, yeah. so. But we try. I mean, it's, it's, I guess we could, I could go get my mask out of the car. I do have that out there. <laughs> We're too late for that. <laughs> but we haven't been around a bunch of other people. Right. So and I, I generally am never around people and that's, that's kind of the way I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. What finger? Oh, I actually, Believe it or not, I normally would have cussed a lot, but I don't think I did a whole lot. I was. I, you didn't. I, I, was didn't. Try, I was trying not to sell it, you know. I was trying <laughs> to play it down a little bit, but I tell you, I will be honest though. There was a couple of minutes there where I got a little lightheaded and knew that the heat was coming down, and I was thinking about that finger, what could be wrong, and I had to sit down for a minute and collect myself. But I did the best I could to keep up with Scott. He about run circles around me, so. <laughs> On, on a normal day, I, could, I, I know I could run circles around him, but it, it just wasn't my day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll go ahead and finish up here. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about before we go? Well, let, let me give this just one crack for all the, what we got? 389. Almost 400. Almost yeah. 400 people. It's that bus grease monkey, <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> and there it is live. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you for everything, and uh, we'll get your bus back on the road, hopefully before next weekend. We'll have it back on the road for you and much safer on the road. Much safer, yes. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to hitting my head on the steering wheel when I hit the brakes. That's that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> Make sure everybody's got their seatbelt on. If you don't have seatbelts, you better install them. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Thank you so much, everybody. See you.